It's one of the UK's oldest alliances. Norway is a long-time NATO member and also now the main supplier of gas in Europe. The Nord Stream attack last year, when three pipelines between Russia and Germany were sabotaged, highlighted just how vital and vulnerable this subsea infrastructure is. At the Maritime Operations Centre at Northwood, Defence Secretary Ben Wallace and his Norwegian counterpart signed a new agreement designed to increase collaboration in the North Sea. The two countries will exercise together more often and work on new ways of protecting critical subsea infrastructure, including Norway's 900 kilometres of undersea gas pipeline. We have seen how energy has been used in this conflict. And as we have already talked about, uh, the strategic importance of this infrastructure is very high, so we need to protect it. But the press conference was unsurprisingly dominated by Ukraine. The Defence Secretary asked why he felt it so important to give Kyiv Storm Shadow cruise missiles. Uh, the high miles in the M270 had made a very significant difference to the Ukrainians on the battlefield to the extent that the Russians were moving many of their command and control centres out of that range. Uh, and, and that's why it's important to, to go where those, those command and control centres go. That, that helps Ukraine in the, in, in the key moments if they can obviously target in the deep. Uh, and it's also one of the mitigations that if you can't provide fighter aircraft, can you help provide one of the things that fighter aircraft deliver, which is deep strike? And yes, we can. We can do that with Storm Shadow. That gives you the range that in other methods you can use with an aircraft, you can do it with a Storm Shadow missile. So it was important uh, very much to do that. The other question, F-16 fighter jets. Ukraine wants them and several countries, including Norway, have them. The US is blocking any transfers to Kyiv, but would Norway send them if it could? F-16, I, I really don't want, I, it's, it's not uh, on the agenda now and I, I really don't want to speculate in any possible future donations. Many analysts think a Ukrainian counteroffensive is very close, maybe just weeks away. So how long could this war go on for? We're as far as President Putin wants to go. He's uh, on the receiving end of over 250,000 dead or injured of his own troops, over 10,000 armoured vehicles destroyed uh, or captured. Uh, he's low on his stocks. Uh, his international reputation is pretty much trashed on the rocks and he is still pressing on. So uh, I'm afraid to say at the moment Russia still seems determined, no matter what the cost to their own people. Uh, and uh, that's why it's important that Ukraine is not only given the tools to defend itself, but also to go to the next step of expelling Russia from its borders. A new UK subsea protection vessel called RFA Proteus will soon enter service. It'll act as a mothership for a fleet of underwater surveillance systems that will scan the North Sea for potential threats. Russia, once again, at the top of the list. Simon Newton, Forces News.